This episode of Capes and Lunatic Sidekicks is brought to you by Tweaked Audio. To get awesome headphones, go to tweakedaudio.com and use the coupon code SOUTHGATE to get 30% off free shipping and a lifetime warranty. Or you can get there through the link on our website, southgatemediagroup.com. This is Luca Parrish and you are listening to Vacation and the Lunatic Sidekicks podcast. What about our Marvel Boy podcast, The Quantum Zone? Yeah, what about our Marvel Boy podcast, The Quantum Nailed Zone? Nailed it. Or our The Crusader podcast. Oh, yeah, or our Crusader podcast. Our fake Marvel Boy podcast. <laughs> our Marvel clone, po- Marvel Boy clone podcast. <laughs> Bob Grayson. <laughs> One to Uranus. Got some fancy like two hickeys. A mad clone comes back with, st- with stolen quantum bands. And hey, let's go attack the Fantastic Four. That's right. <laughs> Well, all right, that's with that sloppy intro out of the way. Welcome back to the Quantum <laughs> Zone, episode 113. I am Phil. Joining me from the library of, oh, uh, on the planet Russ is. <laughs> I'm Will, hey. <laughs> and he who boldly goes where no Massachusetts will ever go before. <laughs> uh, outside of the house. Uh, I'm Matt. Quarantine zone. Did we say that yet? How come we haven't been doing that for the last month? <laughs> oh, the quarantine zone. Yes. <laughs> Quarant- we're quarantined from the. Well, I guess still got to go to work. We're quarantined from the outside world. Quarantined for Wendell Vaughn right now. Yeah. See you later, He's in isolation. He's in self isolation. Wendell Vaughn. We'll see you later. Bye, Wendell. <laughs> see you later, bunkies. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yes, Will. I was, I was showing Matt. Uh, we uh, there's there's more tr- <laughs> that uh, that crazy Australian just keeps sending me n- more drops. Nailed it. <laughs> nice. Out of the pouch, <laughs> boing. <laughs> Out of the pouch, boing. That was a little hellfire request right there. Out of the pouch, boing. <laughs> uh, but yes, uh, I know. I know it's early. Uh, Free will, but uh, yeah, me, Matt, and Ray are be recording new uh, Scarlet Spider episodes Sunday morning. If you want to join us, it's eight a.m. our time. So, yeah, well, oh, seven a.m. my time. Wow, yeah. that is un- that's an unhealthy hour. At some time, at some time in the future for <laughs> for uh, for Ray. <laughs> All right, so are what- we doing it at eight a.m. or did it get moved back to seven? No, eight- well, it's seven my time. I'm central. Oh, oh, oh Eastern, right. So. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. I forgot. Remember? He's a hillbilly. Forgot. He's a hillbilly in the past. That's yeah. right. I'm a hick from the sticks. <laughs> y'all. Uh, all kinds of uh, time zones going on. Uh, so, yeah, what's what's going on in the world? Uh, same thing. Same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to stay away from the world. I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> Nowhere. I was expecting it to go. <laughs> uh but yeah um i think i think it was today because i think they're doing it tuesdays it, dc's actually ship some stuff i think but i think most of it was like reprints and stuff but uh yeah they're uh on the go and i guess everyone else i think i saw an article today i think diamond's gonna start you know gonna have everyone else's stuff to the stores i think it's may 20th yeah it's a wednesday so i think it's may 20th. oh yeah yeah i talked to um a friend who who runs a, a pretty cool comic book store in Beverly, Massachusetts, called Paper Asylum, and he bought the store from uh, you know he took it over from the other people on March first. So oh. that was kind of <laughs> tough timing on his part. And he's the only one there because he, he, if you own the store, you could go in and out, but no employees are allowed in, mm-hmm. and. Uh, so he's been doing mail orders and, and things like that, and he told me that that yeah, the DC thing is a bit of a kerfuffle because they basically put everyone's what they normally order to zero, so you have to like start oh, from scratch all over again. So <laughs> so he's like, so we're ordering less DC now. <laughs> so, uh, but, yeah. yeah, you try to do a nice thing, and it just. Bites completely either. backfires. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, well, I, well, I heard like the, you know people are mad at DC because the two distributors are they're using are like brick and mortar stores, so it's like you know who, is someone getting preferential treatment. You know, you know. So if the if the books come in from DC, are these two stores going to be like 
you know, if there's better grade books than others, are they going to be like, hey, yeah, give us the, the best uh, looking ones. We'll send the damaged ones out to everyone else. Yeah, that's that's kind of the, the nature of things. I used to work in a, a toy store and, you know, we would get one box of whatever action figures would come with like the rare Simpsons toy. There'd be like five Marges, but only one disco stew. And, you know, if, <laughs> if you happen to be working there and you're unloading the box, maybe you put that aside for yourself <laughs> in my case. Or, yeah, <laughs> maybe it doesn't make its way out to the floor. But, you know. <laughs> Best toy That's ever. Tough. Best toy ever. <laughs> Oh my lord! I don't know what it is. Luca does not want to. He says the Simpsons scare him. That's like the only show he will not watch. Really? Yeah. Really? He he said they're scary. He's like, oh, I think he's like, I think they gave me a nightmare a couple years ago. I was like, okay. Weird. Huh. I mean, I could turn on something violent, something whatever, and I I don't think he would mind as much as he's like, I don't want to watch the Simpsons. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you got to start him with the first one, you know, getting a dog. The oh, Christmas his little helper, yeah. 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 hundred years ago. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I yeah, like yeah. 1989. <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I say, I'm, I'm like, I think when that show started, me and Bart Simpson were pretty close in age. <laughs> <laughs> You've gone wow. your separate ways. Oh, no. Well, and I'm 42 <laughs> now, so yeah. So people, yeah. Bart Simpson would be almost middle age now, so. Yeah. <laughs> and he has been middle aged in the show a few times, yes. right? Some of the specials. <laughs> yeah, yeah. God, I haven't watched that show in so long. Me neither. I've been watching. I've been watching some of it on Disney Plus. I, I, I'll, I haven't watched a new episode in like a few months, but I, I used to watch a couple of like on demands that show up. I don't know. A lot of people talk about how bad it's got. I, I don't think it's, they're they're still putting out some stuff. It's, it's worthwhile. It's just so hard because so much has been done before. So it's like, where do you go with it? Uh, oh, speak. there's a whole, uh, there's a whole. Simpsons predicted it. <laughs> you know, they, they showed it. Up oh yeah, Simpsons did it first. You know, oh, yeah, happened I in know. real life. <laughs> but hey, yeah. hey, can I can I say I was vindicated on Disney Plus? I remember when they announced it. I told Danielle, I was like, oh, I got to get it. You know, all the Marvel stuff's gonna be on there and stuff. She's like, oh, do you really need it? Oh, guess who's been in there watching all the movies from her childhood, <laughs> Little Mermaid, uh, <laughs> Lion King. Yeah, okay. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I was right. She was right all along, Phil. She I know. right all along. <laughs> Welcome to the Whipped Married Men- Man podcast. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know if anything else is going on. Again, it's like, what's going on in the world? <laughs> Not a whole lot. Um, we talked Marvel movie news last week. Yeah, um, I mean, everything's pushed back. But, oh, I, I guess, like, is it May? It uh, probably depends where you live. I think either May or June. Again, probably depend where you live. The movie theaters are talking about opening up. But I think all the movies have been pushed back to at least, what, August at the earliest? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. Well, here's here's uh, a bit of movie theater news. It, so there's... um. Drive-ins, I know there's not that many left of the country, but drive-ins are kind of petitioning themselves to open sooner than later, you know, because... Oh, I didn't think they closed because... They have cars and stuff. I thought those were the only theaters that were, like, technically open because, you know, everyone just sits in their car. I mean, I think that there's still restrictions on businesses because there's always the uh, drive-in, you know, the concession stands and stuff like that, but... Maine got permission for a drive-in movie theater to open or reopen on May 1st. So Ooh. I learned that today. Yeah, I was going to say, so. I know around here there they said like all the campgrounds and golf courses and like all the outside stuff can open on May 1st. So, Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I yeah, know I- Massachusetts got pushed back two weeks in terms of the uh, um, stay-at-home order got extended, but I don't know. We'll see. Drive-ins also show a lot of old movies and, and things like that. So mm-hmm. even if there's not a lot of new releases coming out, it's still kind of fun to go see Back to the Future, Star Wars at the drive-in or something. Mm-hmm. Jaws. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, they open it up down there, Will? No, we are not. <laughs> not yet. 
thought the hillbilly's always opened up first. Well, uh, there. You know, what George is doing is kind of scary. I think. Oh yeah. You know, going against what everybody says and just boom, starting to open up. I well, they hope sa- they'll re- rethink that. Well, they said Iowa never like completely closed because they only had like a you know like a handful of cases. Yeah, now it's like, like exploding down there. Mm-hmm. Or over there. Whatever. Who knew that we should listen to experts? <laughs> yeah. How about news? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, did we? I don't think we ever talked the uh, big breaking uh, Massachusetts. Well, former Massachusetts news, Matt Kona. <laughs> is it? Is it? Uh, is it Tom Brady's boyfriend, Rob Gronkowski, going to join him down in Tampa Bay? Uh yeah. There, there was a, and this is old football news. So thanks for coming <laughs> for, your, for your updates to this comic book podcast. I know. <laughs> it's a like, well, now. Wait, wait another two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Rob Gronkowski uh, came out of retirement. He sat out last season, and he was traded from the Patriots to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So, go have fun, it's Florida. You make that money. <laughs> Get taxed less than in Massachusetts. That's true. Live in Florida. Live in Florida, though. Uh... Oh well, yeah. <laughs> I know. The, all, all, like I a, mean, he has a party bus company, so I mean, he's gonna fit <laughs> right in, you know. He's got a hair trigger. That's right, Florida, <laughs> Florida uh, native or not native, but uh, resident in Little Hellfire. Yeah, Gronk and Little Hellfire and Tom Brady. The, Some men just want to ter- watch the world. Terrific run. trio. <laughs> oh no, she she said she's she can't be a Tampa Bay fan anymore. <laughs> uh, it's like you know. See you later, Bunky. <laughs> uh, so should we get to this issue? Yeah, let's do let's it. Do it. There's probably lots of text, so let's do it. You know, the world's <laughs> great. Not as much as last week, I bet. No, not that we're not that dense. <laughs> no. Yeah. Well, we are, but not the text. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. The text. Oh, look! You're in a June for a tree, kids. The world's greatest comic magazine. Oh yeah, that's right. Because it's Fantastic Four one sixty four from this is again another older one, November nineteen seventy five. Wow. Yep. 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 Reaching back in time. I was gonna say before I was born, <laughs> I was alive at that point. <laughs> I was very, very, very young. When I was alive. <laughs> Oh, we could have did. Th- I could have did this intro. I could. I guess I could do it next week. You know, the Fantastic Four one. A brilliant scientist, his best friend, the woman he loves, and her fiery tempered kid brother. Get it? Fiery tempered. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hmm. How ironic. <laughs> <laughs> Almost like it was planned. <laughs> yes. Together, they brave the unknown terrors of outer space and were changed by cosmic rays into something more than merely human. Mister Fantastic, the thing, the Invisible Woman, the Human Torch. Now they are the Fantastic Four, and the world will never again be the same. Uh, I believe that's a Kirby cover, isn't it? Um, looks like it. Mm, yeah, I think it is. I don't see a credit, but yeah, I would assume. Yeah, because no, I shall look. yes, but the interiors are done by uh, guest artist George Perez. Oh yeah, he was a new guy at that point, wasn't he? Well, it says guest. <laughs> art. It says guest artist. Yeah, yeah, oh, seventy-five. Uh, yeah, was it, is that when he was starting? Yeah, I think that was pretty early in his career. Oh Lord, look at this man! It's yeah, but yeah, it's uh, Roy Thomas, writer, a oh, writer and editor. So you know, gets to do what he wants. Yeah, George Perez, guest artist, Joe Sinat, and embellisher, P. Goldberg, colorist, John Costanza, letter Costanza, featuring <laughs> the totally unex- unexpected, wholly unasked for, yet. Not uneventful return of a real Marvel boy. Boy. <laughs> Comma boy. Nice. Oh, Who wrote that us? That's awesome. The cru- I think he wrote that specifically for us. The, the Crusader <laughs> Syndrome. All right. uh, yes, that is a Jack Kirby cover with inks by Joe Sinnott. Ooh. And letters by Dan Kresge for the cover. Yeah, because a lot of times you see a picture of Marvel, or yeah, supposedly Marvel boy, you see that picture. Mm-hmm. All right, so this looks like it opens up with 
the thing ricocheting off the invisible woman's force field. <laughs> oh, holy jumping Jehoshaphat! Oh, Ben, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. Don't apologize. I mean, you did just what you were supposed to, and even and Ben knows it. How else can we test the current strength of your invisible shield except by testing against the closest thing I know to an irresistible force? You made it, Sue. Now you're now an official bona fide immovable object. <laughs> Alicia's just sitting there. Ben, are you all right, my darling? It sounded as if you struck something. Nothing I can't handle, Alicia, baby. Yeah, nothing I can't take care of. Starting right here and now. Starts charging at her. Yeah. Ben, stop. Sue, you die. Oh, oh wait. Yeah. Sorry, I went ahead. I got it. I got too far in front. Oh, gotcha. Sorry about my about that, Susie. But I got my manly pride to. <laughs> Yeah! Sue, you ducked. Uh, you want to hear something, Stretch? Some things you say are more helpful than other things, you know? <laughs> what got into you, honey? Ben could have been hurt. Don't be silly, my darling Reed. I know Ben's capabilities about as well as you do by now. And I knew it was either play the artful dodger or else get clobbered, as they say. Get it clobbered. Look at it this way, dear hubby. At least I made sure I was standing in front of an empty wall, not your precious luck electronic playthings. Yeah, because look, he put a hole in the wall. Couldn't he have, like, fell out? I mean, like, he would have survived, but fallen out of the skyscraper and landed on somebody? Uh, that, that would have been fun. You're all heart, Susie. Now if I just had me a, an Excedrin. Now, Ben, I can tell from your voice you're only teasing Sue. You hear that? Uh, yeah, because Franklin's like, ha! Look at rocks fall from Uncle Ben's head. You know, because... I've been humility. I've been humiliated in front of my own godchild. Franklin Listen, Richards Stretch. is such a B.A. Franklin Richards is a B.A. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll just take your little wifey over here, over my knobby little knee. <laughs> my blessings, old friend. She's got it coming. Oh, my God. It's <laughs> so bad. <laughs> so, so, cuck... You so, heard him. So, cuck... cuck Come old, here, Susie. Cuck old Richards. <laughs> You'll have to catch me, Mr. Thing, if you can. Hey, no fair turning invisible. What else should the invisible girl turn? Blue? Oh, for crying out loud. Now she's making me do a fade out. Turns his underwear invisible. And his legs. <laughs> yeah. Make her stop, Reed. How can I walk if I can't even see my own feet? Cut it out, Susie, before there's nothing left of me but a smile. And I ain't smiling. Very well, dear Ben, but only because you've learned your lesson. Oof! I'm all in one piece again, or at least one bunch of pieces. <laughs> Though my kisser, maybe I was better off playing Claude Rains. Now, now, old buddy, don't forget the purpose of this whole experiment. Test my theory that Sue's experience with Zemu's Thunderhorn... Uh, as recounted in FF number 159 from Roy, uh, had permanently increased her powers both of invisibility and of casting force fields. And you were right. Oh, and I was right. <laughs> that means I'll be a more valuable member of the team than ever before. Come the mommy, darling. And <laughs> Alicia, I'm so happy for you, Susan. <laughs> oh, Lord. Uh... Kona, you got to be Johnny Storm. Johnny. Come on. Here's <laughs> yeah. John. Here's Johnny. Right, I'll be, I'll be, uh, I'll be Cowboy Johnny. <laughs> oh, wow. If I could bottle all the sweetness and light in this place, the price of Shiva hit, hit a new low. Oh, Johnny. What are you all doing it up for, squirt? What do you think, plaster of Paris puss? I've got me a date, if that's okay with you, that is. New threads, whiter teeth, fresh breath. Talk about your winning combos. Oh, you can you can skip the commercials, little Lord Fauntleroy. Your carriage awaits. Well, your elevator, anyhow. No way, Ben. If I get stuck in crosstown traffic, my date will be on Social Security by the time I get there. Besides, I've got my own methods, and I don't have time to stop for red lights. Have fun, Johnny. Don't come home too late, dear. No, I would have to say that, honey. Your kid brother's old enough to take care of himself. I think that it might have been Reed. 
I said, honey, I feel like, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Force the that. dynamic of, of oh, yeah, who yeah, Sorry. Yeah, why did you have to say that, honey? Your kid brother's old enough to take care of himself. Force, Force of, of habit. Oh, yeah, sorry. Force of habit, I yeah. guess. <laughs> you should know about that, Reed, dear. Flame on! Mm-hmm. You know what, Reed? I think maybe your brother-in-law is starting to forget this old romance with Crystal. That's how old this thing is, man. They're still talking about <laughs> Johnny and Crystal. Oh, my God. Hey, Crystal wasn't a scroll, so... <laughs> yeah, that was... Yeah, yeah that's... <laughs> Oh, yeah, he hasn't even fallen. Sorry, for, spoilers. He hasn't fallen for fake Alicia yet. That's right. You never forget your first love, Ben. You simply move on. Oh, Namor. <laughs> on a more pedestrian note, I just hope Johnny remembered to spray his new clothes with my special flame proofing solution. <laughs> and the human torch is flying above all the red lights. Ha! Huh, I can guess what each of them is thinking of right about now. Yes, people, I'm working at getting over Crystal, working at it real hard. And no, there won't be an embarrassing moment when I douse my flames at my my date's front door. Speaking of which, there's her apartment building now, overlooking Washington Square Park, just like she said. Only one thing I've neglected to mention to all in-laws and well-wishers, this little lady doesn't know her escort for tonight is the world-famous Human Torch, and I intend to keep that keep it that way for a while. After all, the last romance I had with another super door didn't exactly pan out, which is one more reason I don't want to get too hung up on Valeria back in the fifth dimension. A reference to FF numbers 158 and 159, squeeze for space Roy. <laughs> <laughs> it's time I had a nice normal type relationship again. One, although uh, there is one superhuman thing about this chick. Namely, she's a living, breathing doll. Hi, Frankie. Hello, Johnny. Hey, so this is Frankie Ray Nova, right? Yes. Yes. Spoiler. Nothing, nothing special <laughs> about her. <laughs> My lord, but Johnny's like Captain Kirk, man. He's got a different chick on every planet. <laughs> uh, Washington yeah. Square, uh, later, Washington Square Park for you out of town, for you out of town. <laughs> All 200 million of you <laughs> lies on the edge of New York City's Greenwich Village. The W in Greenwich, by the way, is silent, kids. <laughs> and it's the only thing in the area that is. Oh, are they saying Johnny's a loudmouth? <laughs> Art fairs, rock joints. You sure live a swinging part of town, Frankie. What about you, mystery man? Where do you hang your non existent hat? When you're not encountering lonely UN translators on in Second Avenue singles bars, Jesus. <laughs> you've got to admit my opening line was good. Frankie and Johnny were sweethearts. Maybe there's a lesson there for all of us. <laughs> Corny, but effect- effective. Actually, if you want to know what turned me on to you, it was your oh, what light. Blinding, bedazzling, brilliant, drowning out even the Maytime sun. Holy crud! And a milling crowd into a frightened mob. Johnny, I, I can't see. You'll be okay. You just... Let's be the long-haired hippie. Oh, you want me to do that or do you want me to do Marvel Boy? Which one? No, I'll do Marvel Boy. I got, I'll, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll try to keep the voice. <laughs> Look, up mind. there at the top of the arch. Who the devil is that? No, you simpering clown. Cool. Not the devil. Quite the opposite. I, more than any, am on the side of the angels. You may call me the Crusader. Um, that is an awesome splash page, is it not? <laughs> that maniac look on his face. Damn clown. <laughs> For I have sworn a holy war against all that is evil and corrupted society, and I'll not rest till I've laid low the forces of greed and injustice. Heavy. <laughs> he's cornier than me or Reed, and he sounds super weird. Maybe he's just a part time <laughs> nut, and I won't have to go into action against him. But then how do you get that fla how do you get that flash or get up on top of that arch? Don't touch that dial torch, because you're about to find out. <laughs> Uh, again, how does Frankie not know he's the Human Torch? Did he not tell her his last name? And don't you think his face be all over TV? Oh, you look just like that guy who helped defeat the Galactus. Jeez. Yes, my friends, you may call me the Crusader. 
and there are others, the wolves among you, the leeches, the bloodsuckers, and they shall call me only death. <laughs> he, like punches through a boom, wall. Boom, shaka, boom. <laughs> That's right. Boom, shaka, laka. Hello, Kelvin McClary. Who are you? What have you done to this building? I. Calvin, get, Calvin, get back! He's coming for you! I've come much further for you than either of you could ever imagine. And now, McClary... No, no, keep away from me. What are you going to do? Alas, even out of earshot across the street, Johnny Storm can guess the answer to that one. Frankie's like, Johnny, come on, we've got to find the cop. What's wrong with you? I don't want to reveal who I am. I don't, but if he does what I think he will... Yes, he ah! Yep, throws McClary out the, <laughs> out the building. Ah, blast, he did it! That means I've got no choice but to fly on! Next moment. Have you ever stood next to a Roman candle when it suddenly went off with a blinding flare? Then try to imagine that that, that Roman candle is a human being and a young man with whom you've been spending a quiet afternoon. And you'll sense some of the trauma a girl named Frankie trauma of a girl named Frankie Ray. Ah, poor kid. I'll explain the whole thing to her later, but right now, there isn't time. Got to intercept that guy before he crashes into one of those buildings. Come on, hero. You're a true blue, tried and true, card-carrying superstar. You can do it. You hear me, buddy? You can do it. Can you torch? As Frankie Ray still standing there all Macaulay Culkin. (laughs) Ah! And uh, human torch with the paisley sleeves. Uh, cool it, mister. I caught you. Woo. And if my hands feel a bit warm, just be glad I didn't forget and fire up completely. Or I'd have turned you into a french fry. I'll put you down next to Frankie here. And Frankie, you okay? But there is no answer. Save from amid the rubble across the street. I know you. You're the human torch. And you saved that rotten scum. Look. I don't make a guy take a personality test before I stop him from being squished like a bug. And speaking of personalities, do you know you're exhibiting definitive antisocial tendencies? (laughs) I'll stall him up here with double talk. I picked up from Reed. Or was it Spidey? Until I get too close enough to do this. Damn. You're good, Torch, in your own bumbling way. But I can leap as quickly as your flames can shoot. And I'm stronger than you are. Far stronger. He picks up a big piece of the building and whips it at the torch. Ooh, can the hard sell, pal. Sure, you're a real bargain basement Samson, but the human torch does a few tricks, too. Such as melting this hunk of concrete so it never even touches me. Now look out, pal, because here I come. And there you go. Punch them. Oh, Spow. that hurts. Bow. <laughs> <laughs> That costumed weirdo seems immune to my flames, yet he's no robot or android. It was a flesh and blood fist that nearly dislocated my jaw. Now stand aside, Torch, and let me complete my mission. Uh, no way, Clyde. We'll see how you take a rain of firebolts first. I have no, t- no more time to waste on flying, flaming buffoons. You're on the wrong side in this battle. My eyes! I can't see! And now you shall be on no side. Ah, I'm blind. One burst from light from that gizmo in his wrist and everything's gone black. Can't land. Heaven help me, I can't even tell where the ground is. Flying wild like this, I'm liable to, liable to destroy a building. Maybe kill somebody. Only one direction open to me, and that's straight up. And Frankie's still standing there like Macaulay Culkin. <laughs> <laughs> now, McClary, it is time I dealt with you. Have you any final words? How, how do you know me? Why have you come after me like this? I don't know you. I never saw you before. True enough in its feeble way. You have never seen me before. But if I'm not the first thing your eyes ever beheld, I shall most assuredly be your last. No! Yes! <laughs> There's a big hunk of debris at McClary. The sound of concrete ricocheting off a wall to strike its final target mingles for a moment with a frightened woman's shrill scream. And when it is all silent again. So, it is done. You've paid Calvin McClary. Yet there are others like you. Others who still walk free. And they too shall feel the full unfettered wrath of the Crusader! And he blinks out. I'm guessing that's a quantum jump? I, I think he just goes right and flies off. And says, uh, yeah. Maybe. Yeah, because there wasn't an explosion. <laughs> 
Um, Will in the park. Oh, yeah. Good lord, he's gone. And if he hadn't covered our eyes, if he hadn't covered our eyes, he blinded us just like he did the torch. And Frankie's just like the torch. <laughs> well, high above and already over another part of the city. Uh, only flame going. Can't stay aloft much longer. Only one chance of old FF signal. Don't have to see it to make it. But that finished me. Too dizzy. Weak. Can't. And he starts to fall out of the flame back of his regular clothing, plummeting from the sky. I tell you, I saw a flash of light out there, the window, and holy crow! It's the kid, and he's fallen! Oh my god, Reed, you've got to save him. It's no go. Even the fantastic guy can't get to him in time. Maybe the car can't, but I can. Hold on to me, Ben. I'm going to catch him. Spoke too soon. Haven't stretched this far in years. Don't know if I can reach him. The strain is becoming unendurable. Heart pumping. Every muscle feels like it'll snap. But I must reach just a bit further. I must. Got him. But we're too near the ground now. We're going to hit and hit hard. Talk about your middle-aged spread. Yeah. (laughs) And basically Reed pulls Ben and uh, Sue to him. Oh, Ben, do you think they'll both be all right? Can't tell from up here, Susie. Can't even see him. We'll know better when the stretch shrinking pulls us to where they are at. It looks like you broke the fall in time with your long-distance force field, but I don't know. Oh, speaking of which, you better do the same for us. Ah, uh, thanks, lady. You're a one-woman fire department. I only hope Reed and Johnny... They're moving. They're okay. But look at them vultures buzzing around. Out of the way, dingbats, or I'll... Let me do it, Ben, in my own way. Susie, baby, I'm beginning to wonder what you need with the three of us. Oh, Breed, if anything happened to you... And the crowd's just like, hey, what? <laughs> uh, the nerve. <laughs> Move it, Gilda. I don't want to mess with them. Mess with them, too. I don't want to mess with those two or the uh, <laughs> fruit pie ads featuring the Hulk. <laughs> <laughs> Featuring the, abomin- the abomination Hostess and one to go. <laughs> Seconds later, as an invisible force field, what else? Keeps away the gawkers and sightseers. Way to go, Sue. Let them eat their hats out. You eat okay, String Bean? Uh, a little worse for wear, perhaps. How about you, Torch? Yeah, I guess so. But I won't be starting any bonfires for an hour. Or so. What happened to you, Johnny? We already know the answer to that, so let's skip ahead a few moments in time to. And so he held. And so help me read, he brushed off my flames like I was nothing but a firefly. He even talked as if he'd come from another world for this revenge mission of his. Well, you've got to admit, we've encountered Galactus, the Watcher, the Kree, plenty of scrolls. Visitor from space isn't exactly the novelty dress that it is to Middle America. This one's an out and out killer. Perhaps we'd all better go. No, I don't think so. I've got my second win now. No need for the four of us to trek down into the village. Wait for me back at the Baxter building. It'll be less conspicuous if only one of us goes. A middle aged egghead in long blue underwear with stilts for feet? And he wonders about us being conspic constrict con- Ah, forget it. Let's go, people. We better get some rest. Lord knows we're just l- liable to need it. Yeah, that, that, I love that dramatic pause. <laughs> <laughs> yes, next time, the light of other worlds. <laughs> mm. So, yes. Great page. Oh, Great yeah, that is a page. Yeah. Yep. You've seen him doing some stuff like that during the Project Pegasus saga. Yep. See, it's Reed like, taking a big stride between buildings with a vision of the Crusader mm-hmm. focusing his arms above uh, the remainder of the Fantastic Four recovering. So, I mean, you know, as far as everyone knows, this is the original Marvel boy. He shows up, he kills a per, he killed, he's already killed one person. Why would Quasar take this suit when he became, you know, I guess, quote unquote, he's a wanted, Marvel? he's a wanted perp, <laughs> exactly. Because Shield. Shield has no imagination. <laughs> I mean, they named a guy from Texas who wore a cowboy hat and spun around. They called him Texas Twister. I mean, yes. 
I guess it's like a carnival ride name. <laughs> <laughs> I guess Blue Streak was you know the closest they got to creative or the Vamp. Vamp. I yeah. think that was that was pretty on the nose. <laughs> yeah. But still, more creative than Texas Twister. Uh-huh. All right, I'm pulling up, pulling up Ray's feedback because he went through hell to get this to me. <laughs> so the sh- were those the, are those the four Shield Super Agents? Is that the way that worked? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that was a, there weren't more. That was just those four, right? Yeah, yeah, I yeah, think yeah. that's right. And at least two of them were traitors, weren't they? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Vamp and Blue Streak. Oh, Texas Twister wasn't in our boy Quasar. Look at my inbox. Ray, Ray, Ray. Okay. All right, everyone. So, what did the other side of the world think of this issue? Let's find out. This is Ray from In Today Night, a Moon Knight podcast. Hello, Quantum Zoners. This is Ray. Uh, just dropping in some thoughts for this cool, cool issue, Fantastic Four 100, Fantastic Four 164, uh, which includes an appearance of the Crusader. Anyway, um, I really enjoyed this. I um, have just only recently finished reading an epic collection of the Fantastic Four. Uh, a bit later, it was um, uh, around 1987, so looking at um, 295 to issue 305 or something like that. Um, it was really fun, and I, I just love the tone of the Fantastic Four comics. I think I've... Um, rediscovered how cool they are how fun it is uh, and anyway this issue 164 was no different it was it was solidly written i thought um the art i love very classic um but let's talk about crusader so is this guy uh i guess he's got well he's pretty much marvel boy right because he's got the flashing light uh, from his bands uh there's no sign of any sort of quantum band uh, action uh but he's also super strong and and does he fly? I can't remember. But he's at least he is very super strong, uh, and he can take on uh, and quite resilient. Takes on the human torches, torches, flames. Um, it was interesting to see him in it. You know, a bit of a bit of a villain and, and quite dark. He kind of kills that guy um, with a, a block of debris. Yeah. Um, but uh, overall, I think it's, it's a very fantastic, four centric comic, um, and a lot of that. Um, I love, uh, especially like the thing interacting with with uh, mm. Invisible Girl uh, at the beginning shenanigans. He's really trying to hurt her. <laughs> I'm so put on Sue for, for kind of getting out of his way and, and blocking him. But um, yeah, Crusader is interesting. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm wondering where to see this where, where this goes. There's obviously obviously some sort of um, parallel universe, or he's from a different time or something, and uh, he's had to do a Terminator and. And kill that innocent fella, uh, and he's got a, a few more people to kill apparently. So I guess we'll figure it all out in issue one sixty five. I uh, really enjoyed that. I wonder what your guys' thoughts are on um, on the Crusader. If you know any more about him um, in hindsight, um, or if you've forgotten, indeed. But um, yeah, uh, I don't know. He, I, I'm assuming he becomes good at the end. Um, but uh, I wonder why he's not called Marvel Boy. Anyway, look forward to it. I very much enjoyed this. I'd give this, um, I don't know, I'd give it, uh, from your grading system, I'd give it a, a solid B+, plus, I'd say. Um, I, I'm really digging this era. Uh, anyway, catch you later. See ya. So I just looked up um, back in, it was a issue of Quasar 30... Four thirty-five. I'll have to go back and look, but uh, you could write in for Mark Grunewald's. He called it "Everything There Is to Know About Quasar Quantum Bands," and it was a two-page uh, typed document. And one of the things that he has in there is that uh, he says, "What can the quantum bands do besides make constructs? Since they enable them to quantum jump or create small apertures between the fabric of space-time and the actual world of matter and energy, and the potential world of matter and energy that is the quantum zone." He can then travel through this trackless feature of the zone and emerge at a different point in our physical space. His quantum bands enable him to keep his bearings while in the zone and thus emerge where he wants to. He can, bec- he can cross countless light years in a single jump, if he so desires. Important note, however, he cannot quantum jump in an atmosphere without ripping a hole, a huge hole in its ozone layer. Thus using it for teleportation on Earth is out of the question, but he figures out a way around that yep. eventually. So spoilers. 
But then it says Quasar could also use the quantum bands to bolster his metabolism, though he has yet to realize this is a property of the bands. His predecessor, Marvel Boy, did and used them to give him superhuman strength and prowess, which is how he ripped the side of that building off. And I mean, and, I mean, in form Ray, this isn't the original Marvel. I mean, it was retcon later that this wasn't the original yeah. Marvel boy, right? Yeah, and this is retcon to be a an insane Uranian clone of Marvel boy because he's apparently still on. Where is he, Phil? Uranus. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and he will come back. Uh, Bob Grayson will come back in the Agents of Atlas uh, miniseries that was from the early two thousands, I think. Which is actually really good. It deals with uh, Gorilla Man, uh, Venus, uh, Marvel Boy, uh, Agent. Oh, there's a. I can never remember all of them. Was but, it? Uh, was it? Was that Jimmy Woo or whatever? Jimmy Woo, yeah, Agent yeah. Jimmy Woo, and then uh, the robot M11 or something like that. And there was one other beside. Oh, Namora. Uh, so yeah, it deals with a lot of the Atlas era characters. So they're called Agents of Atlas, but. Uh, there's a slight retcon in that this was never Bob Grayson that came back to Earth. Yeah. The original Marvel boy was Bob Grayson, and he was, where was he, Phil? Uranus. <laughs> and the Uranians sent this, they gave him the real quantum bands and sent him to Earth to do stuff. Uh, we'd have to read Agents of Atlas to figure out what that stuff was. I can't remember off the top of my head. So in Quasar 26, when Thanos brings back those past quantum band welders, so he's, he brought back the Crusader, right? You know, that's... Or some version. Uh, that's a good question, because... I mean, it's not the original Bob Grayson, so... Hey, that's true, because he wasn't... He didn't he was weld the quantum dead. bands. Yeah. Yes. So this has to be the Uranian clone. This has to be the Crusader, then. Yeah, because Bob Grayson never wore the bands. You're absolutely right. Yep. Well, we just figured all that out. <laughs> we're so smart <laughs> uh, so yeah so you guys are smart I'm just <laughs> oh, seriously if you if you get a chance the uh, everything there is to know about Quasar's quantum bands just google that it'll show up at the quantum zone I've got a I actually scanned the original page it's just a two page type document I've scanned that and I've actually got the text that you can search for on the quantum zone too it's, it's interesting because you can see you can see how Grunewald kind of constructed his abilities so that they they kind of, okay, yeah, this explains how they work in the past. The person didn't know what they were doing. Mm-hmm. This is how they work now. It's just, and he makes it one continuous, you know how he is with, con- or how he was with continuity. He made it all work. And I mean, no. and I mean, didn't we even see in Quasar number two that like, unless you had, you know, like Eon appointed you and gave you the bands that you, you couldn't unlock the full potential because like, Wendell Quinn and Quantum Jump or anything until Eon's like, oh, oh hey. <laughs> yeah, there we go, bang. You're protector of the universe. Yeah, here's a fancy new costume. Quantum jumping <laughs> abilities, bam. And a shave. Yes. And a haircut. <laughs> Which I think we all appreciate now at this point in lockdown, right? <laughs> yes, because the, because the Crusader in the story, I, I mean, spoilers, I think even for the next part too, I don't think he ever makes c- constructs or anything, right? I don't think so. I think it's just flashes and he's using the bands to make himself strong enough to, you know, yeah. flip around on the thing a little bit. And if you don't want spoilers for the end of the next issue, uh, don't listen to our first episode ever or read Quasar number one. <laughs> <laughs> Things don't end well. <laughs> yeah. How about no? <laughs> uh, so, anything else, gentlemen? No, I enjoyed this one a whole lot more than than the book we read last week. Um, just It was just more fun and, and action. And yeah, Ray is a, makes a good point. I like the Fantastic Four too. I mean, there's 600 plus issues to choose from, from the mm-hmm. initial 60s run. And, and they were never like my go-to book as a kid, but I would always just buy them randomly and always enjoy it, but then mm-hmm. probably get overwhelmed with, oh, I can't, collect this there's too many of them i can't keep with those but i would always mm-hmm. buy them up randomly and and i always the uh, you know love reading about comic history and stuff like that and you know it's always billed as the world's greatest comic magazine but i remember and i had to look this up while while you guys were talking but there was um a time where it was kind of cutting it close getting it to the printer so it in uh in the early 90s, 
they slipped one in. Issue 337, it's called the world's latest comic magazine. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Issue is also about time travel. Yes, the time <laughs> bubble, the other time sled, yeah. Oh, that's, yeah, that's yeah. Uh, Walter Simonson. I mean, yeah. there's been some really great runs. Yeah. I mean, we'll set yeah. aside the the, John the, uh, the Kirby and the yeah. Lee and Kirby yeah. issues. I mean, 102 issues together. That's, you know, amazing. But John Byrne, yep. doing, I mean, those those Fantastic Four issues are amazing. And then Walter Simonson came on and did some amazing yeah. things. Then you uh, have- to bring it all the way back around to Quasar, uh, and I don't remember this completely when they were rebooted after heroes reborn, you know, after Hero, heroes return version, I think it was written by Chris Claremont. Uh, yeah. he brought in, um, her kismet or called her something else. Didn't he? I think. Yeah. 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 I can't remember the name, but it, it was kismet. So, I mean, he, you know, I thought you were going to say, bringing it back around the Quasar, uh, before that, in the 90s, when Tom DeFelco was writing, he had uh, Paul Ryan penciling. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's true. And uh, let's see. Then uh, oh, Mark Wade and Mike uh, Wieringo brought Quasar in and turned black say, as human for a while. I was yeah. going to say, we're going to get to some of those issues eventually, yeah, because Quasar that, that was up in that run. Yeah. Sure. That's something. It was great because Wade showed him he was you know, capable, not cocky, and just, hey, yeah, I'll do what I need to do. Nice. Any any favorite uh, Fantastic Four runs, Kona? I mean, I I did like the the Simonson stuff around there. I mean, I I, I thought that the the new Fantastic Four was yes. kind of cool at the guy. Yeah. <laughs> and and, uh, and 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 they when they I think it might have been like their first issue after they were formed. They uh, it was three forty eight, and it says the world's most commercialist comic <laughs> magazine. It was Spider Man, <laughs> Hulk, Wolverine, and Ghost Rider. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. That, that that's peak nineties right there. I was gonna peak say 90s. all they needed was the Punisher. Yes. <laughs> yeah. The, the exactly. Gray Hulk. Yes. Oh, and that has some spectacular <laughs> Arthur Adams artwork. Yes. In it too. That is an amazing three G. Yeah. Block right there. And I believe. Yeah. I mean. I mean to tie it back around the Ray. Weren't they? Weren't they fighting Skrulls? Uh, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was all Monster Island. But there were Skrulls too. Yeah. <laughs> And then like hey, do you uh do you have the Agents of Atlas series? Do either of you have the Agents of Atlas series? No. No, I don't. It's mm-hmm. worth checking out though. Yeah, we might want to throw that in down the road just to yeah, at least you know, explain yeah. away some of this stuff. But it's it, besides just explaining it away, it's it's a good read. I think the first series is six issues and it ties okay. everything up pretty nicely. So it's it's good. Yeah, well, we'll th- I enjoyed it. Yeah, we'll throw it on the schedule maybe after we get past issue 60 because, I mean, think about that. Once we get past, uh, you know, issue 60, which will be our big 150th episode. Um, yes, I haven't planned that far out. Um, I mean, this this podcast is going to be different because we're not going to have like a regular Quasar series. It's just going to be like, oh, look, he appeared here. He appeared here. He appeared here. Here's, here's what's next. Yeah, mm-hmm. I've. It'll be a it's gonna be sad a nice, day when we get Annihilation Nova. It's, it's gonna, I was going to say, it's going to just be like a mismatch of stuff because it's, we're never going to have like a regular Quasar series again. Right. All right. But we're not there yet. No, 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 no. Yeah. Like I said, issue 60 will be episode 150. So we're only at 113. So yeah, we, we still, that. we still got to get Wendell back. We still got to get through Star Blast. Yes. Somehow, somewhere. And they, Prism is it a prism cover for fifty? Is that what it is? I mean, yes. that's pretty peak nineties too. Oh yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. And we get a oh, yeah. we get a big uh, speaking of the prisms 90s, and holograms. Speaking of the mm-hmm. uh, yeah, that speaking of the nineties uh, prism uh, cover, we get a guest star surfing in. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, but speaking of Star Blast, uh, we were saying. Remember, I was saying Tom DeFelco, Fantastic Four. There's two issues of Tom DeFelco, Fantastic Four, that's and Star right. Blast. Absolutely, yeah. And we get Secret Defenders. Mm-hmm. Yes, and Namor, the Submariner, Imperious Rex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's I almost forgot. Um, yeah, I'll make a public shout out. Thank you, Matt Kona, for my Into the Night a Moon Knight podcast T shirt. Well, you got to thank Ray and also uh, my wife, yeah, El, because uh, I'll tell this: I sent a Quasar, a Quantum Zone shirt to Ray, and he sent a Into the Night shirt to me. 
this wasn't an, uh, a trade. It was just him being nice to yeah. send it back. And uh, so it came in the mail, and uh, Yale, Yale got it, but didn't tell me about it because she, like, just took the took it out of the package and, like, put it in the laundry room to clean because she was just super worried about, you know, whatever. Australian Come germs. about Australian uh, <laughs> coronavirus <laughs> being imported. And, and so, so, like, a week went by, and Ray's like, He's like, hey, uh, is this your address? And he sent me my address. He just went off what I hand wrote on his envelope, and it's pretty sloppy. And so he typed it in, and it 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 wasn't that close to what it is. It was like the number was off, and the street name was slightly wrong. Mm. And so I was like, I hope it gets here, but I haven't seen anything. And he's like, well, they said it's delivered, so I checked around, and I didn't get anything. And so he's like, all right, well, I contacted the t-shirt company, and they're going to send you another one. Ooh. And I was like, okay. And then I, I, yeah, I was like, oh, yeah, here, this is this. And so I was like, oh, cool. <laughs> nice. And then another one came in the mail. And so I, I told Ray that, and he's like, yeah, just send it to Phil. So, so yeah, it's, nice. it's, it's from both of us, you know. <laughs> We Speaking both of- paid. We both paid for postage to send it to you, and also some t-shirt company, which we accidentally ripped off. This was not a pre-planned thing. But. Of course. Uh, oh, so now we might be onto something. Now we know how to do it. <laughs> oh, hey, I think Sunday we got to wear our. We both got to wear our into the night shirts. Uh, Kona. Oh, did, okay. Uh, yeah. All right. Did- did Ray let you know who designed that uh, logo for this? Oh Is yes, that- he he did. I still got to contact the guy. I haven't contacted the guy yet, but yes, he did. He did give me a name. Because that was that's uh, pass along my confidence. That's an awesome logo. Oh yeah, because yeah, if it if the price is right, I might get a few uh, logos. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, for a minute, you know, Matt was like, "Oh, you know, thanks to Yale." I was like, "Wait a minute!" I was like, "Why thanks to Yale? Did she get Matt his allowance this week?" <laughs> no, no, no. I was gonna say wait, she gave what? me she gave me some stamps to send it. To <laughs> and then I was gonna say, wait a minute, why is Conan dressing me up like his wife? <laughs> we don't live in Arkansas. <laughs> <laughs> I need to I need to do a banjos. Thank you. <laughs> gotcha, buddy. Uh, but yes, I wanted to publicly. Uh, Thank uh, Matt Kona for defrauding a company and get me a T-shirt. Thank you, buddy. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm an innocent bystander. international uh, international uh, plot here. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at the last. I'm looking at the last page of this issue of the Fantastic Four. Yes. On his vest, Johnny Storm has a JS <laughs> monogram. Ah. Oh. Oh. Hey Look man, last I, hey man, if you're paying the money for the unstable molecules, you better be getting a moniker. Exactly. So how does Frankie not know who he is? Again, I mean, again. <laughs> don't you think he'd be famous from all the adventures? Joe Schmo, Joe Schmo. Just a regular guy. You know, just, yeah. just waiting to throw out a line. I don't watch TV. You know, who's Galactus? Uh, <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> I just yeah, I just noticed that. That's. Uh, Oh, that's uh, pretty speak- crazy. Speaking of Galactus, me, uh, Charlie, I uh, got me uh, hooked on uh, the Marvels podcast. You know, it's based on the uh, Kurt Busiek mm-hmm. and Alex Ross series. I mean, it's pretty good because it was on uh, what one of, was it? Was it Stitcher? Or, it was the pay, but now they put it out free with like an ad. Mm-hmm. The ads aren't even that long, but it's pretty good because it's like you know, Fantastic Four, and it's just like everyone thinks, oh, is there a big conspiracy? Did Reed Richards create you know create this? fake thread of galactus you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> but spider man peter parker's in it too and it, it's pretty good and marvel's gosh it doesn't seem like it but marvel's came out oh, yeah. a really long time ago <laughs> yeah was it the 90s or was it early 2000 it was yeah i mean it's it's been at least 20 years i think it was the 90s yeah. I, I think it was hey, you know what i'll find out give me a moment Cause I'm trying to remember. Did I hear something about a 25th anniversary or something? Yeah, there's a there's a new wow. uh, 1994 is what it looks like. Oh, so wow, so 26 years. So yeah, 25th. There was a new story or a one hat uh, short story or something that just came out. I think. Wait a minute. And there's a new series launching that uh, Busiek's writing. I believe. You said 1994. Uh huh. Oh my god, I was a sophomore in high school. Holy sh- holy crap. <laughs> 
But yeah, all the voice talent on this on this podcast is great. But like, especially they got the, they got a guy playing J. Jonah Jameson. He does like a like a great uh, oh, what's his face from uh, the Raimi movies, J. Jonah Jameson. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, oh my god, he sounds so much like him. Even Charlie was like, "Is that him? Is that him?" And I took the credits. I'm like, "No, that's not him." But it, it sounds he, he does a great impression of him. Oh, um, oh, his name was just in my head and I lost it. Uh, oh, uh, J.K. Simmons. He does a Perfect yes. J.K. Simmons, J. Jonah Jameson uh, impression. Eric, what are you doing? <laughs> <sighs> uh, all right, we've rambled, we've rambled. Anything else? I Nothing. I all got right. nothing. So I was going to say, join us next week, yes, for the conclusion in Fantastic Four 165. So, yeah, we can talk some more FF. Oh, there you go. We can talk our favorite FF runs or something, since we probably won't have any more mm-hmm. news to talk about. <laughs> And then and there get, are several good ones. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. that'll take some thinking. Uh, but yeah, next week FF uh, 165 followed by Quasar 41. Get Hercules back, Thor. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Black. When we find out where Black Widow is, uh, leading that's the awesome. Avengers now. <laughs> and, oh, then after that, Quasar 42. Yeah. Be punishing now. Finally that. back. Yes. The pu- <laughs> well, and the Punisher. Get ready, the most commercialist quasar issue <laughs> ever. <laughs> Just even more so than number twenty-three with Ghost Rider. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man, they, man, they had all the nineties th- in that series. It's like Spider-Man was in seven. Uh, Venom, Venom, yeah, oh yeah, Venom mm-hmm. was in what six? Early. Yeah. No, I feel like it was even sooner than that. I don't know, five or six. Four. I can't yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Venom was in six, Spider Man was in seven, Ghost Rider was in twenty three, Punisher's forty two, uh spoiler alert. Silver right? Surfer. Silver mm-hmm. Surfer's in fifty, yeah. We got Adam Warlock. We got Warlock. Thanos yeah. during Infinity Gauntlet and well, And Adam Warlock during Infinity War and, and then Adam like fifty three yeah. or fifty four where he does yeah. the whole test or whatever. Yeah. Oh well, I was I just yeah. started I, I started Star Blast. I couldn't get through the whole thing in one sitting, but uh yeah, Adam Warlock shows up as Star Star Blast too, so mm-hmm. yeah. I mean I think isn't Wolverine also on the cover of the one with Galactus in it? He's like barely in Oh, he's on issue he's oh, yeah. on the cover for forty cover and he not yeah. himself. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, he might be in was it thirty eight or whatever, yeah, when they're all duking it yeah. out. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh yeah, the cover of that is uh, what uh, the Infinity Watch versus everyone else. Is yeah, that the cover? yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so basically, yeah. we kind of sort of got Wolverine in the <laughs> in Quasar. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We probably duped a couple Wolverine heads into picking it up at the newsstand or at the drugstore. Wolverine, yeah. Archangel was in all those background shots of Infinity War. Oh, yeah. So, oh I mean, yeah, we got the X Men. We basically got everyone nineties. <laughs> oh wait, wasn't it in twenty seven? You know when everyone's cleaning up Eon's body, didn't we see like uh, Moon Knight and oh, Darkhawk? Yeah, well, yeah. So we got New all Warriors. the nineties characters. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Quasar is peak nineties Marvel, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. Although it's written by Grunwald, so it's better than some. Yeah. All right. Absolutely. All right, we are done. All right, everyone. <laughs> so yeah, send your thoughts on uh, Fantastic Four one sixty five, just like our favorite scroll. Uh, so email us capes and lunatics at gmail.com call the voicemail 614-382-2737 that's 614-38capes and follow the quantum zone on facebook twitter uh instagram follow the youtube channel all of it all in one convenient place that's linktree that's l-a-n-k-t-r dot e-e slash capes and lunatics and remember to support the sponsors tweaked audio hunt to killer Pod Life the book, now in digital paperback, and go right down there in the show notes. Use the link for Southgate Media Group on when you do your Amazon shopping, because you know everyone you're doing your Amazon shopping right now. Uh send some money to the company. These, you know, these do cost money to put up, so send your money to Rob. Help us out. Go back and look at my history, and you will find out I am right so much more often than I'm wrong. Mark my words. Talk about Mad Men. All right. <laughs> Macona, where on the internet can people find you? Because you're safely social distancing right now. I am. I'm popping around. I'm online uh, at Matt Kona on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Matt Kona. I did some things. I, I was on a, a podcast or two. I was a guest on one. I'll post the links when they're available. They might be by the time you're listening to this. 
and yeah, that's about it. I'm hanging and I'm out. I'm busy yeah. nursing home with bad intentions. <laughs> oh, that's right. I forgot. No mask. Mike Pence style. Oh, I, that's, oh <laughs> that's right. I forgot. I, I, uh, guessed it on two podcasts. Well, I recorded an Into the Night like a month ago and it just went up. Uh, me and two other guys, uh, Anthony Sitko from Capes on the Couch and the Power of Chad. I talked our favorite, uh, top, our top five Moon Knight artists and, it's completely uncensored, so we're swearing, we're everything. We, we said we basically like you know broke broke Ray's podcast and stuff. So, but yeah, it was a really fun, fun time. So check that out. I think it's episode one forty three, and then I just recorded. It just went up Sunday. Uh, Happiness and darkness, the superhero uh, movie oh, podcast Batman returns. Yes, yeah. with DJ Nick. Yeah, in uh, Italy. So check that out. We. Uh, it was a great talk with him. Yeah, it's so funny because like towards the end, you just hear one. You know, it's Italy, so you hear one of the sirens like, <laughs> like yes, he is in Italy. All right, <laughs> so yes, check those out. Uh, great shows. All I think it all came out pretty good. All right, Will Master of the Quantum Zone and many leather bound books. Where can people find you? <laughs> you can find me at Walred. That's at W A L L R E D. Gmail, Twitter. Facebook, those places. Uh, you can also find my self-published work, Diary of Night, at diaryofnight.com. And you can all find cool stuff at the Quantum Zone, which is quantumzone.org. I'll put it in my navel. Exactly. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for joining us for the Marvel Boy Podcast. <laughs> the Crusader <laughs> Podcast. <laughs> Man, that's hard on your voice, isn't it, man? Hey, hey, this week was a lot easier than last yeah. week. I'll tell you. I was my throat was hurting last week. This was no no problem. Much much less text. No mention of the of the, of the planet Uranus though. I'm disappointed. Huh? <laughs> Maybe next oh next step next day you should pass. So come back next week for more Uranus, people. <laughs> Come for the Fantastic Four. Stay for your anus. <laughs> oh, we didn't get a clobber in time yet. Oh, next week, Kona. Clobber in time. Oh, yeah. All right. We didn't get a flame on. That's true. All right, everyone. <laughs> join us next time. And remember, Quantum Zoners. See you later, bunkies. <laughs>